Welcome back. I'm Tyler. You're watching Scarfing Scarves, and welcome to the second installment of the Snap series, Manga Snaps That Spark Joy. The manga we're going to be looking at is called The Clothes I Want to Wear by Tokeki Nataro. I'm going to butcher this, but translation by Takatora Tsuneki? Typesetting by Spooky Whispering. And at this moment, there is no official English translation. So we owe our even being able to read this today to these people who have worked on it. So thank you. Takatora Tsuneki and Spooky Whispering for putting your efforts into this. I was really excited when I heard about this manga, but I don't speak a lick of Japanese beyond the buzzwords. So thank you. It means a lot to me because I was really excited. This is a Lolita fashion manga. There aren't that many that I know of, but then again, I'm like a fake weeb girl, so I, you know, <laughs> I like Lolita fashion. I don't, whatever mangas I read are just fluffy nonsense love triangles because I'm garbage and that's what I like. We're just gonna go panel by panel, starting on the first one. It starts out with her in what appears to be her school uniform like some time ago. She's talking about courage and she appears to be getting change back or something. She seems to be at some kind of frilly adjacent store because the clerk seems to have some kind of, um, some kind of like EGL, at least related outfit on. Like I can't quite tell because there's no there's no symbols and the clerk is kind of drawn kind of blurry, but she seemed it starts with her essentially at what appears to be some kind of Lolita store. And then it shoots to the present day. It looks like we were in the past. We're looking at an ad that says, become the you you want to be. She's meeting up with her friends. And they're talking about what appears to be their recent transition into adulthood. They're saying we're proper members of society now. You got a job at a bank, right? So they're, they're essentially talking about this transition. And they're saying mommy, which is apparently our main character's name, they're saying she's late and then she arrives. Mommy shows up our main character in this cute little outfit that's kind of a mix of themes. We've got this kind of puffy jacket and, and this little flouncy skirt, and she seems pretty happy and she's cute. And her friend's faces are immediately just like goldfish, just like, what even? And their first, their first words to her are, oh no. And they're saying, that skirt, you sometimes wear stuff like that. And she's like, is it strange? And they say, no, it's not strange. It's just wrong. Look. And they point to the poster of the, the cool girl, the really fashionable, sleek, mature looking woman. And they say that she's like that. That's what you look like. That's what suits you. Don't wear that that weird frilly stuff. And he, they even go on to say that they envy her and say that they like wish they were cool like she is, which is a compliment, but it's also kind of nested inside of an insult because they're saying, you don't suit this, you should be that because that is how we see you. So they put her in this little box for their own devices and I don't think they know that that's cool. And she just kind of laughs it off and then it transitions into a panel where she's just kind of looking into herself in the mirror and she just kind of takes off the skirt. And her mother yells for her to come downstairs, asks her what's wrong, she brushes it off. And the next scene is she's on a train with her sister and her sister has this cute app and says that anyone who, who uses it will be cute. And then she tries it and her sister says it doesn't suit her. Like her own sister says it looks bad. And then she gets to work and her coworkers greet her and they're saying, you know, they want to take a picture, but then mommy has like this flashback to how the picture with the cute filter didn't even work out on the train. So she passes and you can tell her confidence has been affected by this. She's not feeling too confident in herself. And the fact that her friends had essentially like vaguely insulted her, if you could even call it vague earlier. And then her sister saying that she didn't look good with the cute filter, like she's being turned away left and right. And then a new employee is introduced shortly afterwards. And they say his name is Ozawa and he's gonna be working there with them. Her fellow coworkers say, it looks like work just got a whole lot more interesting. They're talking about how cool he looks. He looks stylish. He looks so grown up you know, keyword grown up and also countering it with almost as if mommy would be like affected by this saying like, no need to worry because the coolest person here is still mommy senpai and cool still seems to mean like grown up and sleek and stylish and in no way cute. Like this is all the words they're using to describe her over and over and over. And she just kind of has to go about her shift. She looks uncomfortable and 
she hears comments back and forth from customers saying, hey, isn't that waiter like super cool? Shh, he'll hear you. And then she's also getting comments about herself too. And look, that waitress is cool too. I'm not gonna pronounce that word, but like some kind of actress. She seems like a lone wolf, doesn't she? Haha, -ha, I want to be just like her. And then they honestly, they say stuff that's honestly kind of low key. It's kind of disturbing in a way. It's like, I bet she has no worries in life. How nice. And she can hear this apparently. Like they're showing it to us like she can hear this. And we immediately switch to a scene where she's just laying down with her hands on the table and her head in her arms. In this scene, she's saying what's with everyone, just selfishly saying whatever they feel like. She's like she feels really, pigeonholed and labeled and put into this little box that she feels like she can't escape and it's really affecting her and she wonders if it would be better if she were a guy if she could just be cool and almost kind of pseudo masculine because that's kind of the feel that she's getting from people and the kind of judgment that she's getting and how she's being read as a person without her consent without her feedback the next scene is saying that someone's gonna graduate next spring. They're saying, oh, so Kobayashi-san will graduate as well this spring. So I think that's mommy. And it said, I will need to look for someone to take her place then. But manager, aren't we enough? And he says, well, compared to you girls, Kobayashi-san is strong like a man. So they just compared her to a man. After everything she's been through today with her kind of like defeminization, like the manager out and out says, oh, she's strong like a man. So she's just miserable. As, they're, as the manager is transitioning like towards the dressing room or something like that, she was warning him that the new employee, the new guy, like Ozawa-san, is in the dressing room. And in the next frame, Zawa-san comes out. And he busts through that little box that they put him in earlier with like the cosmic force of a space cannon. This guy comes out in an outfit that I don't, I don't know how he got it. I don't know if he rolled around in a goodwill until things got stuck. I don't know how it's working, but it's interesting. I will say that. It is different, it is interesting, and it does not fit the mold that he was assigned. It's kind of cataclysmic almost. It's Cataclysmic makes it sound bad. <laughs> it was a cataclysmic mistake to wear that, but you know what, at least it's different. So he comes out, everyone is just blown away, especially our our character here, Mommy, and she's just agog. She doesn't even know what to do with him. And he walks right out, cool as a cucumber, and says, good work today, everyone. I will see you again tomorrow. No explanations, no justifications, just whatever the fluff is on his body, and he's out. And the co-workers immediately react, like, were, were those his casual clothes just now? There's no way. And he's so handsome, too. What a waste. He's completely ruining everything good about himself. So these women who previously were talking about how cool and stylish and amazing he was, wasted no time in denigrating him the moment he, he tread outside that little box that they had shoved him in without his permission. This seems to be a common tactic. Like they, people just decide who and what you are. And then when you step outside of that, they are like affronted, like you've done something wrong. And they, they essentially cover for their own surprise and indignation by saying like absolute bloody nonsense. And then like mommy just yeet, like she's gone. Like she gets the frack out and they don't know where she is. And we cut to a picture of him walking down the street and mommy seems to be low key stalking him, but for good reason. And the people around him as he's walking with not, not a care in the fucking world says, you know, he leaves an impression way too flashy. Like they're commenting on his outfit freely. And it's like, what is that, a costume? Isn't that a bit much? People are making fun of him. There's some people like, I think taking pictures. Yeah, in the end they're taking pictures. In mommy's head, she's watching this just completely taken in and says, she's essentially thinking everything she kept worrying about, he doesn't seem to care at all. Like he is just existing in his own space and power with no trouble. This essentially is like, a lightning bolt moment for her. This is an immediate spark. In the next panel, she's home. She's, she appears to have ran home. Her mother's questioning if she's eaten dinner. She's digging through her closet, appearing to look for something from long ago, from before she was on this precipice of adulthood and everything that that meant. And she's running with her school uniform towards a store with this thing in hand, I don't know what she has. I don't know if it's money or some kind of beating stick, but she's got something in her hand and what appears to be a wallet, I think. And she runs to the Lolita store and I think it might even be Baby or something like that, like BTSSB. And she says, is it okay if I take a look at the clothes? Like this seeing 
seeing him wear what he wore was an immediate lightning bolt for her and she ran and put on the outfit that she had long ago in that moment of courage that she talked about in the beginning and she ran to the Lolita fashion store and the and the clerk the Lolita the Lolita clerk says, spring makes you want to buy new clothes, doesn't it? Take your time looking around. So she's immediately friendly. And mommy, mommy immediately says that she's tall, like 172 centimeters tall. And she says her feet are large too. And this woman who's invited her into the store, mommy almost can't, she almost can't contend with it. You know, she's been told for so long that she's this or that she's that and that she's not what she wants to be. And she immediately counters this woman's welcoming with, I'm too tall, my feet are large, and I'm told I have a stern face as well. And she says, if someone were like me to wear these clothes in this store, it'd look so bad that it'd just get laughed at by everyone, right? So she's asking this, this Lolita clerk to validate her insecurities because that's how far she's been beaten down. And the clerk pauses for a second in surprise and counters with, there's always going to be someone who doesn't like your clothes. She then says, I find the clothes in this store to be lovely. And if you like them too, dear customer, then that makes two of us. And then the clerk takes her in hand and said, let's find an outfit that makes you happy. Not that looks good on you, not that will you know, flatter your stern features that you apparently have, it's all in your fracking head, that makes you happy. And that is so fracking important that the clothes that you wear and that you buy and that you put on your body, which you only have one of, with one life to live, by the way, that they make you happy. That is the most important thing, that you feel comfortable in them and they make you happy. And then they go on to say, when the clothes are made, they are only at 50%. When they get worn by someone like this, they finally reach their full potential. She goes on to put her in a full outfit and says, dear customer, congratulations for graduating. So she must have been holding her diploma. And it cuts to a, an image of her shocked face. And the next panel, she's wearing a full cord, like a full on cord. And she looks adorable and she's just blushing and it's so pretty and it took so much to get her to that moment and she just looks fracking magical after everything that everyone pushed on her and said about her and tried to dissuade her from doing because she fit some kind of purpose for them she's standing there in full lolita regalia and she looks amazing she immediately has flashbacks you know of all the things that people said about her when they were pigeonholing her like cool clothes suit you best, that skirt doesn't look good on you, somehow this app doesn't suit you at all. And she comes to the realization that this is who she wants to be and says verbatim that this is the truth, this is who she wants to be. And it ends on a shot, the best shot in the world. I know we have the full color her right here, but it ends with a shot of her after that realization on her bed at home in the full cord with what appears to be an usakumia in her hands just happy as a fracking clam and the reason i point that out and the reason this brings out so much emotion in me is because that used to be me like i'm sure i'm not the only one that used to be me back in the day because there was a time when i let other people define what I looked like. I was always told I have such a mature face. I look so much older than I am. Like since I was in high school, I was always told that I was like a decade. I looked a decade older than I was. I've never in my life been mistaken for younger, not ever. And putting on Lolita fashion in the beginning was so scary and it felt like I was ruining something and it didn't look right and I could never pull it off ever but then one day I just let it I let that go I let everyone's opinion of what I could or couldn't be or what I could or couldn't wear what I could or could not like I let that go and I let I let myself be happy I let myself wear ridiculous pink princess dresses because they make me happy. So I, I just, I had to review this because I love everything about this message that, that you can wear and be 
and do whatever you fracking want, no matter what you look like, no matter what people have told you, no matter what kind of impression you've gotten of yourself from like completely unreliable sources. You can be this way if that's what you want. And I wish her all the best as she continues in her little journey. I haven't seen chapter two, but I really want to read it. I hope you translators continue doing your work because you were doing the Lord's work over there because this made me want to cry. Like legitimately the most gorgeous ending and I feel in my soul the happiness and the contentment that she has when she's squeezing that little usakumia in her full cord for the first time at home, just at peace with herself for the first time in God knows how long. So love this manga, love the clothes I want to wear. I hope it continues with translations. And I think that about wraps, I think that about wraps it up. That's all the time we have for tonight. Thank you for watching Scarfing Scarves. This has been Tyler. And before you run off to watch something that actually makes sense in some capacity, you should know that this show is sponsored in part by BB&B. They make the best jewelry ever made. Link to their shop below. And to wrap things up with a big fracking bow, I'd like to thank my patrons for somehow continuing with me even when I produce things as confusing and random as this. Although this one's part of a series, so it's only gonna get worse from here. If you'd like to join their number and or have too much time on your hands and want to see videos the public hasn't seen yet, you can head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews for more content that should have you scratching your head whilst wondering what you're doing with your life. Thanks again guys, and I'll catch you next time.